Welcome to Mixing Night. I'm your host, Ken Lewis, and uh, I'm here with the real star of the show, Mazakeen Lewis. Come here, babe. Come on, lay down there, babe. Uh, did you know I have the weirdest resume in the entire music industry? Uh, actually, that's totally true. Uh, so stick around for the next two hours, and uh, let's hang out together. Um, let's do it. Uh, and, um, you know, you might have noticed that I'm in my new That Mo Studio A. Oh, man. We are fully immersive, both audio and video. Uh, I am in my happy place. Oh, Mazzy's in her happy place, too, here. Come on, Maz. Lay down. Lay down. Come on. Lay down. Girl. There to that. So, so we're still fine-tuning the place, and uh, but we're in and working. I've been mixing like crazy already. Uh, the new studio just sounds, woo, it sounds so good. Um, I actually mixed a big K-pop record today. I got to revise it and print finals in the morning. Uh, so we're already making headway. <laughs> Mazzy, now you relax, bae. Uh, super hats off to my designer and builder, Mike DeSalvo of I Build Music Studios. He really provided me an epic space to be creative and, and quite like, before we did any room correction at all, the room was just damn near flat and sounded amazing. And we just a tiny little touch of room correction, which is nearly unheard of. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, so I have about 40 feet of uh, wall projection around me, almost floor to ceiling. Uh, it wraps around about 200 degrees around mix position. Uh, you know, the vocal nook I have uh, right in the front corner. I have the C800 up there right now, but really where the wide, <laughs> where the Atmos wide uh, speaker is right there, when we cut vocals, we take that speaker out and we put the mic so that the vocalist is about four feet uh, from the wall. The projectors project right over their head. We just did this this weekend with a great new artist um, out of uh, Chicago. And, uh, uh, and if I want to just immerse them in like a movie or, you know, outer space or their lyrics or something deeply meaningful to them, then all they see is wall and uh themselves and they can kind of get lost in the performance so i've been trying to kind of get to this place for the longest time as a producer and you know as a mix engineer and as a just a creative in general um, my ability to be able to put myself in any environment that i want any time uh, like that uh is just like a magical superpower to me and so for um, so, for instance, uh, if I wanted to put myself on my beach in Ecuador, you know, that ain't going to happen. Down. Down. She's such a loser sometimes. Uh... So, you know, if I want to put myself on the beach in Ecuador or in the middle of New York City or in ancient Rome or outer space, wherever I want to work that day is where I'm going to uh, put myself right in the middle of my environment. And, you know, the other really cool thing about that is um, uh, uh, I can put, you know, when this isn't quite finished yet, we've <laughs> we're damn close, um, but but uh, soon we'll be able to stitch all of these three projectors together instead of mirroring them. And I'll be able to project one uh, solid image around the entire wraparound. So I was just down at my place in Ecuador and I took all these panoramics um, of uh, the whole, uh, you know, whole beach just wrapping around. So I've been, as soon as we can do that, I'll be putting it together. But um, anyway, so <laughs> Studio A is done. We're going to cook up more fantastic ways to use it and show you guys cool things uh, coming up in the future. Uh, but for tonight, I'm just going to immerse you in some sci-fi and some all oh, you. You? You be a good girl tonight. Okay. Good girl. Excited about it, too. She really is. She actually, she loves it here, you know? <laughs> Studio B, she, was, she would hang out sometimes, but she wasn't in there. Um, so, uh, uh, let's see what else is on the show. Oh, I think I might later on in the show do critiques. 
So if you want something critiqued and you are watching right now, you are in luck. Uh, you can email to info at mixingnight.com. Uh, email an MP3, something tangible that we can download and have my guys send to me in the controller. Info at mixingnight.com. Info at mixingnight.com. Send me a... Uh, uh, also, send me, like, tell me what you want me to critique about it. And I think maybe the last half hour of the show I'm going to uh, So that. Um, also, uh, tonight's show is action packed. I thought I was going to sprint Bohemian Rhapsody, but I can't find the fucking files. Um, so I'm going to pull in something to sprint here in a moment. Uh, this show came together very last. On. Um, and, uh, um, sprint. All right. Well. We're certainly immersed in a chill environment. God, I love it. So, and also, like, when I took, so this is from my beach down in Ecuador. I took all this uh, video. And uh, um, so if I want to, I can just switch to streaming, and I hear, like, the sound of my ocean. So anytime I want, I can just, like, close my eyes and hear the sound of the ocean, just like I'm sitting right on the beach right there uh, where it is in front of me. So I am uh super big hey super big thanks to uh, uh Kyle Wolf for putting down the countdown video for us. We had him do a much more extensive one, but man, I haven't had time to download it and prep it for <laughs> for the show, so we're gonna go with this one. Um so I got ten minutes on the clock. This is the upside down. This is one of my favorite mixing night songs. Absolute killer. Uh and uh welcome to the new Thatmo Studio A. It's a fully immersive 914 uh Atmos, and we are wired for Sony 360 as well. So let me start. Oh, oh. You gotta be kidding me right now. What is even happening? This is Mixing Night. You found it. Ken Lewis, Magikeen Lewis. Here we go.
far is it? To change my mind, I'm living life on a bended knee and suffocating on hypocrisy. This is what I get.
trying to change my mind I'm living life on a bended knee And suffocating on hypocrisy They're looking left in the moving right They're waiting on me to fall in line Throwing punches only feeds the beast Another victim of the big machine Well, how was that for some action for you? Whew. Welcome to Mixing Night. I'm Ken Lewis. This is the Sprint Mix. I, you know, I was going to sprint Bohemian Rhapsody, but couldn't find it on the hard drive. I have no idea where it is. Uh, so anyway, I decided to sprint the Upside Down, which is one of my favorite songs to sprint. Anyway, super dope. Um, what is going on with the mouse right now? Come on, mouse. Come on. Uh, so, let's see. I was going to do Q&A right now, but I don't have Miro set up. Um, so I'm going to go straight to start the show for a moment. Um, so I'm in this group called Obscene Stealers. And Obscene Stealers is myself and Michael Moss, the movie trailer boss. And if you don't know Michael Moss, the movie trailer boss, he has composed movie trailers for Fast and Furious and Star Wars and Mulan and Tenet and Dune and tons of video games and TV shows and you name it, he's done it. He's a freaking genius. Um, anyway, so he and I met and produced a song together uh, for another friend of mine. And we, you know, just, you know, when it clicks, it clicked. So we were like, we should do this more. So we started up Scene Stealers and we basically smash uh, his. Um, kind of cinematic talents together with my kind of record making sensibilities and uh, whenever we do a song that we think is real cream of the crop we put it out. So I believe that the next song we are going to put out in maybe two to three weeks is this little gem that we have been working on forever and a day called Start the Show. And uh, um uh, yeah, so start the show of features. Hey, you. You need to be a good girl tonight. How do you like the plaques in the back? Um, I can't see anybody on the chat right now, but um, I'm going to be watching this on rebroadcast and seeing what everybody's comments are on the room and everything. Uh, but uh, uh, So we have these kind of carousel plaques in back, which I'm really liking. <laughs> hey, you. Lay down. Lay down. Don't be a spoiled little bitch. Come on. Lay down. Lay down. Relax. You've already been fed. He's like, but I haven't been walked. I'm going to bite your ass, Dad. That's, that's Mazzy for you. Always threatening Daddy. Jeez. Boy. Okay. So, Scene Stealers featuring Danielle Stars. And I know Fash. And you may know Danielle Stars from Losing Game. And, uh... Yeah, losing game. And uh, and you definitely would know Fash from 10 out of 10 and the song we just put out recently, Roll With The Punches. So we've got, an, um, we've got both of them combined on this song. I don't think you're ready for it. I'm going to play the whole song because this is like the worldwide debut. This is the this is world premiere of uh, Obscene Stealer Start the Show. Uh, so I hope you like it as much as we love it. And then I will do some... Uh, I'm going to show you a bit about Gold Clip in a minute. Um, I just got this uh, clipper. It's like it emulates the Lavery Gold. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, a to D, which is like this revered A to D. It's like a 
costs way too much money. And the thing that everybody loves about it is the clipper. So uh, this guy named Ryan Schwab from Schwab Digital uh, figured out how to exactly recreate the gold clip, and I'm going to show it to you. Um, in the meantime, here is the world premiere of Obscene Steelers. Start the show. The lights go out. Nope. Something is seriously wrong. Oh, my God. Liquid Sonics is not playing, guys. Uh, I wonder if I can just swap that out with something real quick. Uh, here's some technical snafus I did not expect. Whoa. Uh, can we play a bounce? Oh, yeah, we can. <laughs> um, let me import that. Right. Yeah, one sec. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Mm -hmm. oh, crap. Um, so let me tell you all a studio story. Uh, I just, do I want to tell the one I just told? Sure. Uh, so I was working on, on the college drum. Mad. Come on, Bay. <laughs> Come lay down. Um, so I was working on the college dropout, and, uh, uh, sorry, guys, if I play this out of ref, are you picking it up in there? I wouldn't find out. Uh, okay. Uh, either way. Um. Just one try. Yeah, as soon as I import this. Um. Wow, this is really quirky. Uh, so when I was working on the college dropout, uh, which is like forever and two days ago. Um, we were working all night wrapping up. Uh, God, I don't even remember uh, what which song it was on the record. I think it was uh, When it comes to being true, at least true to me. One thing I found, one thing I found. No, no, you never let me down. So that's that's me um, singing. That uh, sped up vocal sample, uh, uh, that's me on the vocal sample, and me and Brent uh, recreated all of that instrument instrumentation, and uh, uh, that's all us. Uh, let's see, is this the final? Start the show. No, here we go. Today, really, uh, sorry, we're a little scattered tonight. Um, that is not the one. Here we go. Boom. All right. We're going to play you the world premiere in a moment. Well, you guys are going to have to tell me if this goes to ref. And if nothing else is going to ref. Um, so I was just at AES as well, which was the most amazing experience. Uh, are you guys getting this on ref? What's that? The ref? Yeah, the ref. Okay. Mouse is being cranky. I'd take a breath and leave the world behind. I'm just going to put it out the mix bus and, uh, I'll put myself back in Zen mode. Oh, Ecuador, I do miss you. Um, here we go. Here's the mix bus. Okay. Fine. No, that I do believe <laughs> this is the world premiere of Obscene Steelers. Start the show featuring Danny Stars and I Know Fash. The lights go out, the stage is mine. I take a breath and leave the world behind. From way down low, the beat starts playing. It's what we know, it's why we came, and it's time to start the show. It's time to start the show. 
break Something they wanted to bang No matter I ain't came all this way for nothing is crazy I left it all on the stage They counted me out the game What an awful mistake Nah, I'm doing numbers they came Because they love it, I beg your pardon I guess I changed the way they saw us mate. The fans are calling my name They waited out in the rain Just to hear what I said 15 minutes is all we get I'm at the finish and barely breaking the sweat They want it all but never came close Everybody take your seats Cause it's time to start the show On the stage is all I know Like I'm in love but love ain't home It's right here, I'm right here Woo, world premiere, Obscene Steelers featuring Danielle Stars and I Know Fash. Start the show. Uh, that's like one of my favorite songs ever, ever. I really love that thing. Um, I'm just going to be there. Um, hey, Mazzy, you're finally calming down a little bit. Mazzy was just so wound up earlier. I think something about mixing night sets her off. I don't know. Maybe it's the monologue. Like she knows. As soon as that monologue happens, it's treat time, motherfuckers. All right, I'm going to go to some pre-submitted questions. Uh, from uh, pre-submitted questions, uh, Katie H. asks, Hey, Ken, who is your biggest inspiration in the music industry right now? Uh, I got to say Taylor Swift is absolutely killing it. Um, I mean, that's a easy target but i what she's accomplished and what she's accomplishing and how she's maneuvering and how she is uh, increasing her income with her music not a liquor endorsement or a sports drink company or some shit like that it's like uh she's really changing the world and uh, her bank account completely with music so that's super impressive um uh, in other music industry things, the Las Vegas sphere, I think, is uh, a game changer. That thing. <laughs> hey, you. You're a game changer, too. Why don't you lay down? Lay down. Relax. Get comfortable, bae. Come on. Get There you go. Good girl. The Las Vegas sphere, I think, is a game changer. It is ignited curiosity in uh, immersive video which is this is my little las vegas sphere right here i've i built my own so uh but the sphere it's incredible it's got something like 166,000 speakers which equates to like 8.6 speakers per seat it's 18,000 seats uh it's 18k projection uh, they capture 3.2 terabytes of data a second uh, the tech behind it is just incredible. If anybody saw the clips of the U2 concert, it's mind-blowing inside. And on the outside, it's a 2K projection um, meant to be kind of viewed from a distance, and it's, it's just crazy what they're doing with that thing. Um, so, you know, when we start seeing that, that was super inspiration for this. Uh, we're definitely harvesting more videos and stuff for the wall, so anybody got any amazing video that you think like we would really love to splash up on the walls up here while we work feel free to send it to info at mixingnight.com and maybe we'll splash it up on one of the next mixing nights you never know you never know mazzy bear uh you do okay um excellent uh no she's good she's good mazzy come here bae come here bae you know where the you know where the gravy train is. Mazzy knows where the gravy train is. Um, and Jack Antonoff speaking about other biggest influences. I mean, man, that guy has just had a string of huge successes, including Taylor Swift. Uh, so, which I hope. Uh, so I, you know, me and Dom, who also founded the Mixing Night with me and Lori, uh, me and Dom both worked on the Taylor Swift Midnight's album. Uh, we both worked on three songs, so I'm hoping that thing brings home a Grammy for Album of the Year. I will be the happiest man ever. Uh, Zachariah Vargo asks, Hey, Ken, as brands and social clout have become the avenue of, of success for industry artists, what do you feel is the future of engineering and producing music in the next five years? <sighs> man, that's a layered question. I, you know, I don't know that I'm the right person to answer from experience because 
I'm kind of, I've already passed all of the uh, fleshing out stages, but, you know, I think a lot of younger engineers and producers nowadays are looking for, you know, emerging TikTok artists who are doing decent numbers, but not great numbers yet that they can like help build together. Um, and because uh, like it or not, uh, the labels for uh, uh, signing breeding ground is really TikTok. They're finding their artists off of TikTok, and it's really algorithmic. So, you know, they're seeing what what the reaction is, and they're kind of gauging what they think they can do with it. And if they plug this, this artist into their system, they think they can do X amount of whatever. And most of the deals done nowadays are like that. Very, very few of the deals done nowadays are, you know, this artist developed uh, behind the scenes and nobody knows them, but they're the most gifted person on planet Earth. Uh, it happens. Definitely, definitely happens, but it's rare. Um, so, and artists like Obscene Stealers, we're not trying to get a record deal. We're trying to uh, break into and grow into the sync uh, business. Uh, music for film, TV, video games, uh, that kind of stuff. And both Michael and I have had a lot of success in sync, so uh, we feel like the and the responses we've got from the Obscene Stealers stuff so far has been crazy, so... I think we're going to do real well in sync uh, together, both short and long term. And that's certainly a goal going in. Um, uh, so, you know, but, but I think the young engineers, I mean, there's a couple paths. You can get in at the bottom rung of a really big studio and grind your ass off and work your ass off and work your way up and eventually you're going to be in the place where all of the big artists come. And that's basically the path that I took. Uh, but it was a much broader path back then. Uh, nowadays, um, you can do that. A very few people are going to do that. And the people that do are probably going to go on to be successful freelancers. And that's going to be your competition. And they're going to be loaded with credits. Um, so how do you get your credits? Well, that's the thing. You only, you know, people usually hire you first because of your credits. So if you don't have any... You've got to find people to work with to try and just climb the ladder slowly. You're not going to wake up one day and work with Rihanna tomorrow. That's just not the way this shit works. Um, and it certainly is not a business strategy. So uh, Ulysses, um, uh, Ulysses Argueta uh, asks, uh, Hey, Ken, uh, it was an honor meeting you at AES NYC. Oh, are you guys the uh, BOCES uh, students? So... Um, yeah, if uh, regular viewers of the show might remember the uh, Long Island BOCES uh, high school performing arts program that we featured on the show a couple times. So we happen to run into like a couple dozen of the students uh, from BOCES at AES. You might see a little bit of them at the uh, AES recap coming up. And uh, uh, so uh, he's a BOCES, um, uh, you know, class member. Let me see where I put my rough mix here so I can read that thing. Uh, let me, let's see. Um, ba -ba -ba. So you asked, I just wanted to ask you, where, where did you go after graduating high school and how was the process? Uh, okay, after high school, I spent one year getting my uh, academic credits out of the way at a local community college. So math, science, whatever was required for graduation, I did locally. Then um, I went uh, straight to Berkeley College of Music in Boston. I did six semesters at Berkeley and graduated um, and with high honors. And I uh, uh, graduated 1991 magna cum laude in music production and engineering from Berkeley College of Music. So that, that gives you my approximate age. <laughs> and... Uh, um, and then I uh, moved back to Ohio for a year, and when my future wife graduated college, we moved straight to New York City, and I got a job at a big studio called Soundtrack Recording Studios, still, still there in Manhattan. You know, back then there was probably 60 or 80 or 100 big studio facilities that you could get in at and work and work your way up. And so I got in at Soundtrack, which was a nine-room facility. And uh, within a year, I was like the number one guy at a nine-room facility, and I was engineering and uh, getting all my own gigs and 
Well, not no. I was not getting my own gigs. They were getting the gigs for me. I was just the kind of the one who was getting work like crazy. So, um, but then in uh, 1995, I went freelance, and uh, which was risky as fuck at the time. But uh, you know, it was time for me to move on, and I did, and I made it work, and I scraped and clawed. At one point, I realized that the freelance record that I was making for Universal at the time, I was making about five bucks an hour freelance. Um, so yeah, that was like the first freelance money that I made, but I was, you know, I was surviving and uh, that parlayed into the next one and the rate went up a little bit and that parlayed into the next one and the rate went up and within a year I had, uh, was getting a decent rate. And I think by 1998, I stopped taking any tracking sessions only can called myself a mix engineer and uh and made the transition to mix engineer which took about a year of pain i probably lost i don't know 100 grand in one year by not uh taking tracking work um if my wife is watching i apologize i'm not sure if you knew that but we made it up long term in mix work i certainly assure you um so i want to show you this gold clipper um let's see uh how do I? Okay, that's where I'm gonna show you the gold clipper. So I, I've been, I just ran into Ryan Schwab at uh, AES. That dude is a wizard. I don't understand a lot of the things that he was telling me, but I do understand that he's he's quite intelligent with it. And uh, so um, he's a mastering engineer by trade. And so he's used the Lavery Gold uh, A to D quite a bit. Maz, you wanna, you, you pouting? Uh, um, uh, and uh, so um, we ran into each other at AES. He told me all about Gold Clip and uh, gave me a copy of it and I checked it out and I was like, okay, I see the magic of the Lavery Gold. I get it now. So, so I'm gonna show you guys how to use it. And uh, this is, I've, I've done a few mixes with it so far, so I'm kind of getting the, the taste for it. Um, let's see, am I on the, hang on. I beg your pardon, I guess I changed the way they saw us made The fans are calling my name, they waited out in the rain just to hear what I said. 15 minutes is all we get, I'm at the finish. So the, the first thing that you're supposed to do for this, like the gold clipper, the way I understand it is it's meant to be very clean, clear, transparent, extra volume. So it's not like your standard like hip hop clippers that are meant to like take that fucking 808 and smack it. Uh, this is not that kind of clipper. This can probably do that, uh, but that's not why you would get gold clip. Um, so uh, Ryan tells me the first thing that you do is you basically push up the input until uh, you've got uh, your clippers basically n nothing's happening, but you're like right at, right at clip level. So I'm going to see where that. Something they wanted to fame, don't matter. I ain't came all this way for nothing. It's crazy. I left it all on the stage. They counted me out the game. What an awful mistake. Nah, I'm doing numbers. They can't. Okay, so I'm now I'm at about Unity. I'm not really doing any clipping at all, but now I'm gonna pull the clipper down about a dB and I'm just gonna get a, give it a little bit of clipping. Fresh out of the oven, I made something they wanted to fame. Don't matter. I ain't came all this way for nothing. It's crazy. It's crazy. I left it all on the stage. They counted me out the game. What an awful mistake. Nah, I'm doing numbers. They came because they love it. I beg your pardon. I guess I changed the way they saw us made. The fans are calling my name. They waited out in the. Already, it just sounds bigger and beautiful. Uh, let me pull down the clipper and just see what kind of effects it, it's given us. 
Fresh out of the oven, I made something they wanted to fame. No matter, I ain't came all this way for nothing, it's crazy. I left it all on the stage. They counted me out the game, what an awful mistake. Nah, I'm doing numbers, they came because they love it, I beg your pardon. I guess I changed the way they saw us made. The fans are calling my name. They waited out in the rain just to hear what I said. 15 minutes is all we get. I'm at the finish. Fresh out of the oven, I made something they wanted to fame. Don't matter, I ain't came all this way for nothing. It's crazy. I left it all on the stage. They can't. All right, so that's about dialed in. Now what you're supposed to do, apparently, is give it some of this gold processing. And you can give it, like... The settings right here, you have modern or classic. Modern, um, you have 2.5 dB of gain. And classic, you have 6 dB of gain. So I'm going to keep it at 6 and just see what we get. Uh, and I'm going to keep this on the screen, and I'm going to look at my final RMS while I'm doing this. Uh, boom. Here we go. Just, uh... Fresh out of the oven, I made something they wanted to fame. Don't matter, I ain't came all this way for nothing, it's crazy. I left it all on the stage, they counted me out the game, what an awful mistake. Nah, I'm doing numbers, they came because they love it, I beg your pardon, I guess I changed the way they saw us made. The fans are calling my name, they waited out in the rain just to hear what I said. 15 minutes is all we get. I'm at the finish. Fresh out of the oven, I made something they wanted to fame. Don't matter, I ain't came all this way for nothing, it's crazy. I left it all on the stage. They counted me out the game, what an awful mistake. Nah, I'm doing numbers, they came because they love it, I beg your pardon. I guess I changed the way they saw us made. The fans are calling my name. They waited out in the rain just to hear what I said. 15 minutes is all we get. I'm at the finish. Fresh out of the oven, I made something they wanted to fame. Don't matter, I ain't came all this way for nothing, it's crazy. I left it all on the stage. They counted me out the game, what an awful mistake. Nah, I'm doing numbers, they came because they love it. I beg your pardon, I guess I changed the way they saw us made. The fans are calling my name. They waited out in the rain just to hear what I said. 15 minutes is all we get. I'm at the finish. Fresh out of the oven, I made something they wanted to fame. Don't matter, I ain't came all this way for nothing, it's crazy. I left it all. Wow. Uh, so I'm doing 3 dB of clipping on the left, and I'm kind of making up the gain uh, for the ceiling pull down over here, over here. I'm just leaving like a very small amount of headroom on the final mix bus. I could probably even get away with going to about there. Uh, something like that. And, uh, and wow, this is like just pure volume without changing any of the characteristic of my mix. Everything just got louder and bigger and uh, more present without uh, losing any... Uh, I'm, yeah, this sounds great. Let's let's let let's listen again. Fresh out of the oven, I made something they wanted to fame. Don't matter, I ain't came all this way for nothing. It's crazy. I left it all on the stage. They counted me at the game. What an awful mistake. Nah, I'm doing numbers. They came because they love it. I beg your pardon. I guess I changed the way they saw us made. The fans are calling. Whew, gold clip is fire. Uh. So, yeah, I've been using that the last couple days. I think that's going to stay in my arsenal for a while. Um, let's see. Let's, uh, let's go to some questions. Josh S. Uh, from the chat roll asks, Hey, Ken, uh, how bad is the projector noise? Uh, well, I've got the projectors on high tonight for just high def um, projection for mixing night. They're a little bit loud like this. I mean, if I was early in the mix and the volume was up, I wouldn't even hear them at all. They're not, like, obtrusive. They're just... It's kind of like having a fan on the back of the room or something. But when they're in echo mode, man, they are quiet. I mean, I, I can hear them. I can tell that they're on. But we cut vocals with them in echo mode the other day, and it was fine. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, we still have some dialing in and some playing to do with them. Um, but, you know, for, for being in the room for under a week, we are uh, getting pretty dialed in. Uh, let's see, uh, the 10% asks from the chat roll, uh, hey Ken, uh, would you always use gold clip at the end of the chain or uh, pre-final limiter? Um, 
You know, I think Eric recommends putting it first in the chain, but I don't really understand how that works with my brain. Um, because you're you're basically supposed to put it first in the chain and then uh, get rid of all your headroom and then clip, and then it's supposed to be really clean. But first in my chain is all of the colorizing things. So I see gold clip as my last finishing thing, which is how I would use a Lavery Gold if, uh, if I was mastering with one anyway. Um, so end of my chain uh, for me, and, uh, and I just kind of you know push into it until it sounds big but not squashed. Hey, baby girl, you making yourself known, sweetie? Yeah, oh my goodness, you are just the cutest thing. Mazzy is loving the new studio. She's been out here a ton, possibly because I've been playing her with kibble and treats. I don't think that really, I think it's just love of her daddy, but could be the kibble and treats have a small role to play in it. It's really hard to say. Uh, uh, Ulysses uh, asks from the chat roll, uh, hey Ken, what does the alchemy knob do? I wish... I wish that I could tell you that. I don't really know. I think it has something to do with low-level information. I can tell you this. It's super, super subtle. Like, I was A-being, and I was like, uh, maybe I hear it. But you definitely hear the gold processing. And the, the, um, the point with gold clip is not to use the clipper here, but to use the gold processing. Uh, so, and I guess this is what really emulates the outboard hardware. So... Um, it definitely, I mean, I've never owned a gold, lavery gold. The things are incredibly expensive, but sounds like an expensive plugin. What is next on the agenda? Um, I can show you some mixed tricks with start the show, but I'm going to go to the AES recap. Man, we had absolute, so me and Jonathan and Nolan from here all uh mobbed out to new york city for aes and my good friend sam gray joined us out there and man we just ran into a plethora of people that we knew out there and met new faces and we uh we shot a faders of the lost art uh podcast which if you didn't know i have another podcast it's not mine i just show up and talk in it um but uh, it's, uh, I think it's currently on YouTube. We're trying to syndicate it called Faders of the Lost Art. And it's me, Dave Pensado, uh-huh, that, that guy, uh, Bob Horn, Nico Hamui, and uh, Fareed Salama. And so five pro mixers, uh, tons and tons of session experience between all of us. And we all just get together and talk shop and nerd, nerd it out together and, uh, it's kind of, it's a lot different than this show, which is a lot more like showing you stuff and techniques and things. It's, you know, we're just kind of dropping science on you on faders. But, uh, uh, yeah, that that was very fun to do at AES. Um, so, anyway, here's a full recap of AES, and we'll be back in a few minutes to pick the show back up. Enjoy. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Apparently, uh, media is not playing from the control room, so I'm going to see if we put it in the right show folder. Uh, what folder is it in, guys? In the download. Well. Well. There's a black screen. Uh, you guys getting that? You guys getting that? Talk to me. Yes, we're getting that, but no. No audio? Sorry, everybody. We're trying to work this out. Well, 
Well. <laughs> We're pulling it up right now on our end. Awesome. They're pulling it up in the control room. They've found it. New show jitters or new control room jitters. We'll get all these past you for next show. Next show is going to be running like a well-oiled machine. Uh, this one's not running too badly, but, you know, it's been a crazy, crazy week. AES didn't help, man. We spent three solid days at AES, and uh, uh, you'll see the mayhem ensued. It was so much fun. But, you know, uh, AES is really about connecting with people and making connections and networking and networking with companies and individuals, and we did a ton of that. You know, it's also about kind of keeping... All right, I think they're going to show the video. Here's AES. This is my good friend Dylan Wissing. Hey. Dylan has been my session drummer forever. He played on Girl on Fire, on a bunch of Kanye stuff, on Yeezus, on... Uh, Drake. Drake. Jeez. Eminem. And, uh, and your website is... Still uh, I'm DylanWissing.com. DylanWissing.com. Yeah. Get at him. Hey, it's Ryan Schwab from Schwab Digital. He makes this gold clip plugin. We're gonna show it to you on Mixing Night. Shit is dope. We got Rick Carson from Make Believe Audio here. Amazing plugins. We just had him on Fade of the Lost Art. So check out Make Believe uh, plugins and Make Believe Studios. They really make some great stuff. Thank you. I'm Josh with the John Lennon Educational Tour Bus. We are a nonprofit mobile recording studio doing free music and production and all kinds of creative endeavors free for students. We go into a school, we pull up right into the high school, uh, we bring on six to eight students, and we create a brand new song from scratch uh, and a music video as well. <laughs> yeah, the show's been great. On Point Studios, we're out of Las Vegas, Nevada. We got three different rooms, A, B, and the Atma Studio. Rocking, man. We just deal a lot with A list and, and doing a lot of mixing and mastering. I'm here with Kevin at Cloud Microphones, AES 2023. How are you guys doing today? With us today, we just have our, you know, try and true CL1. That just gives you the 25 dB of clean gain on the way to your preamp. It's Ken Lewis here with Frank Slater from Sonox Audio. Love their plugins. So uh, Frank was showing me this new Claro plugin, which is like a teaching plugin, which is the most mind blowing thing. It's like one of the coolest things I think is it gives you uh, EQ in descriptions rather than uh, EQ bands and then if you click on the piano roll it tells you what piano note you're affecting and then what frequency you're affecting. Ken Lewis, I'm here with Dave Riley, director of Focus Ray Group Professional in the Americas. Dave hooked us up with a giveaway for uh, Octopri Dynamics, so we're giving that away this week. Love the Focus Ray stuff. Thank you for hooking us up, Dave. Absolutely. Happy mixing night. See you there. Favorite things from AES so far? Odyssey headphones. They came out nice. with uh, an immersive set of headphones. I have not heard that yet. Yeah. Oh. I, I didn't even I'm know they had there. immersive. I'm headed there. Yeah. Now. That we finally can meet with each other and uh, nobody is afraid. I still see analog gear and not only plugins, and, and that warms my heart because you know I'm the analog guy also. Favorite things at AES this year that you've seen? Well, I would say the people first, obviously. That's why we're here for. There's some really cool manufacturers here you can talk to and get some, you know, info about the gear or like the plugins they make and maybe some discounts. <laughs> Woo, well, obviously the cloud microphone booth is a really, really sick booth. Um, also, I am loving the things that are happening over with the SSL systems. And also, Dangerous booth, the uh, Ex Machina speakers sound absolutely killer. Seeing the Dolby Lab was also pretty sweet and being all the great people. There's a lot of great things. The Sound Toys always Back. has the best food. We love Sound Toys. Harrison, shout out to Audioscape, shout out to Ex Machina. Um, my favorite my favorite thing I think at AES this year was that Harrison console with the extra foot to put all the stuff. Well, the people have been absolutely amazing on this show. I was a little worried coming in because there weren't a lot of booths, but honestly, this has been the best AES I've ever been to. Everybody's just been amazing here. It's been such a great show. It really has. I'd say, I gotta say, I was really impressed, honestly, with Pro Tools Carbon yeah. for, for the low latency monitoring. Like, it's extremely fast. And I'm like, okay, that I want to take a look at. Sir, <laughs> after.
after the EQ, if you want to minimize the EQ, you put it before the EQ if you just want it to be loud. People. <laughs> this is motherfucking Prince Charles. This was the dude that was inspiring me when I got to New York City oh my God, no as a young way. engine. Oh, totally way. You did a lot of work out of uh, Soundtrack Studios and I was yeah. staff Soundtrack. Yeah. Every time you were in the building, it was like Prince Charles is in the building. Oh my God. And I never got to assist you. I was like, it was always the coveted assisting position. And I always uh, wanted it, and everybody else got it. So that's amazing. Fuck, dude. Yeah, like your mixes were legendary back then. Wow. Like to see, you know, you 18 years of Berkeley now. That's yeah. fucking incredible. I, I can't even believe I'm in it for 18 years. That's man. nuts. It's crazy. But dude, the amount of students that you've inspired in the last yeah. 18 years that I'm, do what I'm, we do. I'm, I'm starting to feel including that. Including that one right there, yeah. motherfucker. I'm starting to feel <laughs> that. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's good yeah. stuff. Well, thank you for what you're doing, man. Likewise. Turn in tomorrow. All right. Appreciate you. All right, gang. You're back. Tommy's back. You're back. Hey, hey sorry, sorry everybody. everybody. I didn't know I was back. Let's go to Juan Diego uh, Ilescas uh, from the chat roll asks, Hey, Ken, what do you think about Teletronics and Pultec EQ plugins from Universal Audio for treating vocals? Have you used it? Um, the UAD Pultec Pro Legacy is my singular favorite EQ in plugin realm. Um, uh, it is. It stacks the EQP one A and the uh, MEQ five together. Uh, here it is. I'll show it you right now. Boom. Here is the Universal Audio UAD Pultec Pro Legacy. Uh, I love this thing. Whenever people talk about like three dimensional EQ, I always think that's kind of a bunch of horseshit until I fire this one up and then I hear this and I'm like, okay, uh, I kind of get the three D ness about this thing. It just pulls things in and out of your mix that you didn't even really know were, uh, were not that you didn't know were there, but you didn't know that they could sound like that. Um, so I really, let me just give you a go. Uh, I'll just here. Um, well, let's do this. I'm going to save this setting, uh, which is going to be right there. I can put it back and I'm going to Reset this, and I'm gonna work on the mix bus from scratch. Um, and you guys can hear the magic of this amazing little uh, Poltec Pro Legacy. Fresh out of the oven, I made something they wanted to fame. Don't matter, I ain't came all this way for nothing. It's crazy. I left it all on the stage. I'm just trying to fix the reverb right now. This is driving me a little nuts. Sorry, folks. Why? Where's the reverb on this sucker? Three and four. Okay. Where's bus three and four? Ah, that's why. Okay, we're just going to do that. It's what we know. You know, don't deliberate over reverb all that much. It's not super, super important. Okay, the flock was I showing you guys? Oh my lord. <laughs> um, I totally forgot what I was showing. Um, oh, why do you hear? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you guys the Pultec Pro Legacy across 
the mix bus as soon as I find out where the reference is playing. I don't see any reference playing. At all. Are you sure? I've just got the full mix going. If that's on Miro, somebody, somebody's not needs to put that up there. Cool. Oh. When the lights go out, the stage is mine. I take a breath and leave the world behind. From way down low, the beat starts playing. It's what we know, it's why we came. And it's time to start the show. Feel the music letting go, like a habit can't be broke. I'm right here, it's right here, and it's time to start the show. You know, one secret weapon of the uh, the uh, Poltec Pro Legacy is the low frequency on the EQP-1A affects so much more than kick and bass. Uh, if you, especially if you put it at 100, and you, uh, let me just go back to the top, listen to how much richer Danny's vocal gets uh, when I start pushing up the bass on, uh, boost at 100 hertz. When the lights go out, the stage is mine. I take a breath and leave the world behind. From way down low, the beat starts playing. It's so that low frequency band affects a whole lot of stuff way up into the lower mid range uh, that doesn't have anything to do with the frequency numbers on the dial. Um, so it's really like a kind of a low frequency shelf that just stretches way into the lower mids, probably up to 1K. Somebody knows this, but not me. Um, anyway, so you get a little bit of a glimpse at, at the power of this thing, man. You can just really dig in. It's so musical. Uh, so that's typically one of uh, my go-tos. I can't remember which other one that you asked about. Um, but, uh, I mean, typically UAD has the best emulations, but everybody's getting pretty good anymore. Um, let's see, what else can I show you from Start the Show? Uh, um, uh, da, da, ba, da. Well, I'm going to show you the vocal chain. Behind, from way down low, the beat starts playing. I'm not kidding. I really use my own plugins like crazy. If you if you just look at my screen, lol comp, lol comp, lol comp, lol comp, lol comp, lol comp, green house, lol comp. Uh, they're all over the place. This is the most versatile plugin on planet Earth. I can really shape the sound so quickly to get anything that I want. Uh, and you can see, let's just hear the before and after on on this vocal. I mean, you know, other things are in the chain, but it's mostly this. Behind. From way down low, the beat starts playing. It's what we know, it's why we came, and it's time to start the show. 
it just evens it out so nicely and smoothly and just crisps it up and mm. uh and then a little bit of soothe after it behind from way down low the beat starts playing it's what we know it's why we came and now you'll notice with soothe uh my sharpness is I think the default sharpness is like 4.6, which is fine, but it tends to be a little bit smoother with a little bit less sharpness. And I also always, if your processor can handle it, go to four times over sampling and ultra resolution. It definitely makes a big sonic difference. You can immediately hear it. Um, and don't force this to do too much heavy lifting. The other cool thing that you can do with Soothe is uh, you can use this as a low frequency only detector to clean up only the low frequency. So I'm going to pretend that all that high frequency shit isn't happening. And let me just show you some low frequency tricks. Uh, actually, can I just... Uh, here, let me do this. I'm just going to... I'll give you a fresh start on Soothe. I'll show you how to control low frequency resonance only. Uh, I actually did this earlier today on a mix. Behind, from way down low, the beat starts playing. It's what we know, it's why we came, and it's time to start the show. Feel the music letting go, like a habit can't be broke. I'm right here. Behind, from way down low, the beat starts playing. It's one we know. I'm not really sure if you can hear that uh, clearly there, but it really cleans up the low end. Uh, and this is like an, for lack of a better, more accurate term, it's it's kind of like an AI EQ. It searches for resonant places in your uh, in your vocal and tries to tamp those places down. So. Sometimes it does a better job than others, but this is a pretty awesome little piece of tech overall. Uh, let's see. So that's Soothe. Um, Auto-tune. Almost every artist, unless they're using a ton of vibrato or they bend their notes very slowly, almost every artist gets auto-tuned. Uh, and a lot of times I use auto-tune in the mix, and I don't even tell the artist. Uh, you know, it just locks them in a little bit closer than they were before. Uh, and um, you know, you don't know why it sounds just a little bit more coherent, but it does. So this is a retune speed of 34, which is pretty slow. Um, where it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of slow. Behind, from way down low, the beat starts playing. The other reason that I'm using autotune, the most important reason that I'm using autotune, is when I, when I produce vocals, I get a lot of takes from my artist. And like with Danny... Uh, with Danielle, I had her do, I don't know, 20 or 30 takes of this song, and I would push her down this direction, and I would push her down that direction, and I would kind of see what vibes I could get out of her. And then uh, then I sent her home, and then I comped all the vocals. If you don't know what vocal comping is, it's basically like sifting through and putting together a puzzle of the best singular pieces of every moment of uh, her performances cut from every single take. That's just the best piece of every single take um, put together into one single take that sounds like the best single time that they ever sang in their life. Um, so, uh, uh, so while I comp, here's the, here's the thing you need to pay attention to. While I comp, I comp through auto-tune. Through auto-tune. Everything that I'm listening to I take all of my uh, individual source tracks, say I have 10 takes. All those 10 takes are going to be at zero. They're not going to have any effect on them or anything. They're all going to be routed to the same mono bus. First thing on that bus is going to be auto-tune. Second thing on that bus is going to be uh, probably lull comp compression and you know vocal cleaning up. So I'm going to uh, use auto-tune, and I'm going to uh, snap the vocals in better tune. And then I'm going to use lull comp to, to bring uh, the sound of the vocals up to uh, what it would sound like mixed. 
And that's what I'm listening to while I am deciding which vocal take is going to be the take. And so I can hear the magic of the performance in tune. Because hearing a magical performance this much out of tune, when you don't know whether or not it can be fixed, you're probably not going to pick it. But if you're presented that way, with that magical performance slightly out of tune but fixed for your ears, then that all of a sudden becomes the comp choice. So uh, you could probably undo autotune from any artist that I've uh, produced and comped, and the comp is going to sound crazy because autotune is fixing all of the little imperfections that I never even knew were there uh, um, when I was comping. So a little deep insight for you. Uh, from the chat role, uh, Camilo Vel Velandia? Camilo Velandio asks, hey, Ken, if you needed to high pass, uh, would you do it before uh, the EQP and after again, before and after? No. Um, first off, I virtually can't remember a time that I have ever high passed my mix bus once, ever. I high pass individual channels when I hear problems, but uh, aside from that, I don't really high pass much. Um, uh, let's see. So. Uh, yeah, that's I only high pass when I hear problems. Uh, D Lopez from the chat roll asks, Hey, Ken, what's your go to saturator? <laughs> um, let me show you. Come on, open up. This saturator is so versatile on so many different things. Uh, first time we showed Law Comp, I, I played like a really gentle, like a clean electric guitar, and I put it through this, and the initial saturation was this beautiful light crunch, and then it pushes right into metal saturation. It's awesome. Same thing with vocals, um, but you gotta be really careful of how hard you drive the vocal into it. Um, with the saturation, it's got to be a bit lower level signal coming in in order for the saturation to be pretty and not distorting. And then you can push into saturation as much as you need to to get that distortion sound. And then after you push into saturation, you can back off the mix so you can get some of the clean vocal mixed with some of the saturation. Listen. Behind, from way down low, the beat starts playing. Yeah, I don't think it works particularly great for this song, but I've used this saturator on the mix bus. Sounds amazing. Um, but you can't drive it hard on the mix bus. Uh, and I've used it on individual sources in tons of different ways. It's really top notch. Uh, Chris Acosta from the chat roll asks, Hey, Ken, do you feel like you need to make a drum bus for every track uh, you mix to take some of the burden off of the two bus? Chris Acosta, I never use a drum bus. Virtually ever. Uh, it's just my style. Everybody has their own style. I'm not hating on using a drum bus. It's just not what I do. Uh, and the reason that I don't use a drum bus personally is if you're feeding all the drums to one stereo bus and you mix the song and the artist comes back and they say, uh, you know what? Uh, I need that kick a lot louder in the mix. Well, you just fucked yourself because... <laughs> Uh, when you turn that kick up in the drum bus, you're going to turn all of the other drums down, you're going to overdo the impact of the kick, and you're going to uh, mess up the compression on everything else. Um, so it kind of, when you bus everything into one stereo bus, it kind of handcuffs your ability to change things down the road. And you want, I want the ability to be able to change and manipulate things right up to the end of the mix. Uh, so, and I feel uh, combining things in too many buses uh, is 
kind of really limiting for me. Um, so I just feed everything into the mix bus and blend accordingly. And uh, yeah, you know, I've gotten sessions in where it's been seven or eight different buses, you know, the guitars bus, the drums bus, the vocals bus, the backing vocals bus, the but 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 that's way too much for my brain. Like you have to keep track of all of that stuff. You gotta go like, oh, these channels go to here and this. And so half of the time you're on like a ex exploration mission while you're mixing, just trying to figure out where you should be when you want to be in the moment reacting to what's coming out of the speakers in real time and just, uh, you know, um, connecting with the music. Mm, iced coffee, I tell you. If you're not on iced coffee yet, I'm sorry. Uh, where do I want to be right now? I love the mixing night colors. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, uh, Ulysses uh, Music Engineering asks, Hey, Ken, where would you add Green Hoss? Uh, I've been very curious ever since I downloaded the trial. Let me show you some Green Hoss tricks. Let me get this back to about where the vocal was before I started messing it up. Okay, so I just put some, let me solo what I did so you all can hear it. I'm going to take the reverb off so you only hear this. So I just basically put a real gentle spreader slap delay on uh, the lead vocal with Green Hot. Behind, from way down low, the beat starts playing. It's what we know, it's what we came, and it's time to start. So this really, the beauty of the watering can in Green Haas is this is your phase coherency. So all the way left is dry, you're 100% phase coherent. And then even if you're halfway wet, most of the time when people use the Haas effect, it's 100% wet on both sides. And uh, that's different than this. This is dry in the middle, and then the left delay time and the right delay time uh, are behind the dry watering can. So if your watering can is 100% wet, you have no dry and it's all return. But if you're here, you're mixing. So the, the vocal, I like to do this with the vocal. It puts a little bit of a kind of spread slap behind the lead vocal. I'm darkening it with the high cutter on the delay a bit and I'm putting it through the tulip modulator, which is one of my favorites, especially for vocals. It just feels good. And then I'm going to dial the watering can back to about a quarter to 20%. Just give it a little bit of spread. And if you're in headphones, you can hear this remarkably well. Behind, from way down low, the beat starts playing. It's what we know. It's why we came. And it's time to start the show. Feel the music letting go like a happy. Just adds a little bit of size and dimension to your lead vocal. Um, but if I wanted to do special effects stuff with Green Haas, I could do that stuff too. Behind, from way down low, the beat starts playing. It's what we know, it's why we came, and it's time to start the show. Music class. 
And again, in this technique, I'm using really short spreading uh, delays behind the lead vocal, but I'm still keeping about 30% of the dry lead vocal in so that I can keep that phase coherency so when it sums to mono, I don't lose the whole lead vocal in my mix. You can also hear some flanging. That's because I'm using two delays that are really close to the original source and really close to each other, spread out left and right, and then I'm modulating them with the daisy, which is a good modulator for flanging. And then I'm putting some fertilizer on it, which is like feedback. Uh, so this uh, recycles the, the sound and gives you a little bit more of that. Uh, del Here, let me show you the... I mean, come on, <laughs> Mixing Night Audio plugin, god damn. Uh, that's Greenhouse. Um, Greenhouse was 49 bucks. Man, we cracked the code with that thing. So did we with Lolcom. Um, and uh, da, 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 let's see. Um, so if you want me to show you anything else uh, in particular with Greenhouse, then send me up another question on the chat, uh, and I'll show you some other techniques. But that thing is just... Imagine it, imagine Green Haas as three separate modules that can be used individually or all together. Here's the saturation and distortion module over here, three different types of saturation, high and low cut, and a wet dry balance. This goes from about 50% to 100% uh, wet dry balance into the saturation. So you can push way into saturation and then give yourself some of the dry signal back and clean it up a bit so that it's, it's, so that it's clearer. <laughs> so... Don't you love the sun? <laughs> so, uh, and the plant monster. Um, and then, uh, but you can also turn this off and get no saturation whatsoever and use only the modulation. Or you can turn the modulator, you can turn the delay section and the modulation section off and use only the saturation. So, this is a super, super versatile plugin. Um, hey, you. Lay down. Come on. Lay down. Be a good girl. How are you guys liking the new studio? I'm fucking in love in here. It's like my favorite place to be ever. Um, okay, so... Uh... Uh, Ilya Greetings asks from the chat roll, uh, Hey Ken, do you often focus on reference tracks when mixing? Thanks. Uh, I usually I usually listen a lot to the uh, rough mix. And I feel like the rough mix is just like a compass direction. It's not your finish line. It's your compass pointing you in the correct direction so that you can give them the best version of that direction. Um, so I think, you know, uh, making sure that, uh, you kind of absorb the rough is important and, uh, reference tracks, I think like I used them today. Um, it depends on what you're going for and what kind of a mix it is and what the expectation is, all sorts of things. Uh, but I'm certainly not afraid to use them and I'll usually use them for certain things. I won't try and find a apples to apples. I'll be like, I want the drums from this reference track. And I want the vocals and vocal treatment and reverbs and whatnot from this reference track. And, you know, and I'll kind of keep maybe three or four or five to bounce around in uh, while I mix um, and just, you know, see what happens. Um, so uh, that's the kind of the typical way that I use reference tracks. Um, but the way you can use reference tracks if you're learning how to mix is 
So, for instance, if you're mixing a trap song and it's kind of like a Post Malone song, and you know, you, you say you take your Post Malone song and you put that in your session in a way that you can very cleanly A B back and forth. There's A B um, plugins like Metric A B by Plugin Alliance. Um, I know there's others. Uh, and um, you can say, you know, I want to, first of all, you got to level match the reference mix to the perceived level of your current mix, whatever that is. So while you're adjusting, you're always kind of trying to do apples to apples levels. And then you listen, you go like, you know what, the kick and snare is locked in, but his hi-hats are much louder and brighter than mine. So let me brighten up the hi-hats and turn them up a little bit and match the Post Malone. Like, oh, okay, that feels better. Now, uh, I really like the way the Post Malone 808 is sitting. So let me work on my 808 and see if I can get it to match this Post Malone thing. And so you, you kind of go one step at a time and you just go apples to apples and then you turn off your reference and you go like, well, you know, how's this working for mine? So it's not, it's not like you have, you have to stay committed to those moves, but if you're young and you're trying to use reference tracks to help you figure out what the next move is, that's a pretty good way to do it. And you can just A, B, A, B, and go like, oh, his lead vocal sits right here. I'm going to try and make my lead vocal sit right here, too. Uh, and that's uh, a good way to do it. I wanted to show you um, this uh, new EQ that Sonox has called Claro. Uh, I didn't have time to grab it, but I'm going to show it next time, I believe. Um, but Claro is a really cool like teaching EQ. Uh, and obviously I think you saw it in the AES recap, um, if you were watching that, uh, but I'm going to try and do a little demo of it next week too. Cause I think for people trying to learn the art of equalization and, and how, you know, this affects that and, and stuff like that, the Claro EQ could be a really cool way to start learning that. Um, and, uh, let's see, do we have, um, bah, bah, bah. what else, what other goodies want, do I want to show you from start to show? Uh, let's go out. The stage is mine. So, Michael Moss is responsible for all that fucking amazing epic drum shit. The, the, da, 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 da. Oh, he's great at that kind of stuff. Let me just play this a little bit and see what we can. Something they wanted to fame Don't matter, I ain't came all this way for nothing, it's crazy I left it all on the stage They counted me out the game What an awful mistake Nah, I'm doing numbers, they came Because they love it, I beg your pardon I guess I changed the way they saw us, we made it Tell you, I'm not kidding I use Law Comp like crazy it, it has replaced so much of my processes It's just so fast and easy and perfect To dial in exactly what you want So this was first in my chain Crash out the oven, I made something they wanted to fame Don't matter, I ain't came all this way for nothing, it's crazy I left it all on the stage, they counted me out the game What an awful mistake, nah, I'm doing numbers they came Because they love it, I beg your pardon, I guess So I pulled out uh, almost 60B at almost 4K Yep, 4.1K, 5.5 uh, at a Q of about 2 Um you know, that voice was just really sitting right in the mid-range, and it didn't really need to. He's got a full enough range voice to carry, but that mid-range was just a little bit too pronounced, so I pulled that out. Crash out the oven, I made something they wanted to fame. Don't matter, I ain't came all this way for nothing, it's crazy. I left it all on the stage, they counted me out the game, what an awful mistake. Nah, I'm doing numbers, they came because they love it, I beg your pardon, I guess I changed the way they saw us, we made it. The fans are calling my name. They waited out in the rain just to hit. Little bit of high frequency boost way, way, way up top. Um, 17K at a wide uh, bell. I'm just doing a 3 dB boost just to kind of open up the top end just a little bit. Give it a little bit more air. Crash out the oven. I made something they wanted to fame. Don't matter. I ain't came up. And then I'm pulling out a little bit more of uh, 2.5. And, ooh, and I pulled out 80. Um, I looks like. 2 dB, 2 dB at 80 and 2 dB at 2.5, and here's the overall curve for you. Crash out the oven, I made something they wanted to fame, don't matter, I ain't came out. 
It's a little bit more gentle on the ears, a little bit more musical. Um, it gets rid of a little bit of the slop of the microphone and focuses you a little bit more on uh, the magic of the voice. So if the magic of my uh, <coughs> mouse... Hey, <laughs> Mazzy. What's good, baby girl? So Mazzy is uh, spoiled, shall we say. That's the way it goes. Um, what, what I, you know, let's go to Marcus Manderson mixing Night Man of Mystery. Um, actually, I don't know how we're going to do that. Um, can somebody come up here and get a hard drive? Actually, I don't even know where it is. I, I don't know. What's good, Mixing Night family? This is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery, back with another Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment. In this Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment, we're going to talk about the more free plugins you can check out as we enter this month of Thanksgiving. And then we'll also share a site that you should check out for Black Friday deals. All right, let's get into it. First, we have Deja Vu by Cymatics. Cymatics has released a couple of free plugins. Their latest free plugin was released just a few weeks, weeks ago. It is Deja Vu. It is like a lo-fi distortion type plugin, time stretching, pitch shifting. Definitely check it out. It is 100% free. It is 64 bit, so make sure that it's compatible with the system you are using. But check that out. We will include a link to all these plugins in the Discord. Next, we have Loop Track from Gospel Producers. Loop Track is a drum plugin, the best free drum plugin on the internet. There are, I think there are a couple hundred sounds in there, over 400 samples, including claps, kicks, snares, hi-hats all those sounds are in this free plugin and as a bonus if you purchase it or if you get it for free don't purchase it if you get it for free you can uh donate your own loops you can make your own loops and submit it and it can be free and available to everyone to use there are i think a couple hundred loops already out there for free that you can download and use with the loop track next we have new tone by new tone um new tone is an ai audio plugin which is bridging the gap between ai research and creativity you can input certain sounds and it can output other sounds it can transform your sound to another sound using ai so definitely check out new tone we will include a link to the Discord. Next, we have free drums. These are free metal drums for everyone. Krim or Krim He. I don't know how you say that. Krim drums, the free edition. There is also a full edition, and you can see the difference on the site between the free and full editions. But for the free edition, you have a lot of great stuff already built in, all for free. So check out Krim drums for free. Next, we have Elemental Player, which is also free. You can configure, compose, and perform with an organized library of unlimited virtual instruments. So definitely check out Elemental Player for some of those organic instruments, including uh, grand piano, Scandinavian soundscapes, and more to be added over over time. Next, we have Whirly Model. Now, this is a limited time free offering from Audio Plugin Deals, uh, Whirly Model 120 by IK Multimedia. Hopefully, this will still be up by the time you get to the site, so check it out as soon as possible. Whirly Model 120 for a free Whirly sound. Next, we have some Wasted. Let's get Wasted. Wasted audio sounds. You want to go to this site and you want to just look up free. Um, You have the distortion here. You have a uh, another distortion. You have modular. Oh, that's not free. You have delay. So what you want to do is you want to look for free under the name here. Uh, of course, they have some really inexpensive plugins also, but check out the free stuff from Wasted Audio. Next, we have EQ. 6 by Norsonance, Norsonance, Norresonance. I don't know how you say that exactly. EQ6 is a, a EQ plugin with six bands that you can adjust uh, different settings for those bands. So there you go. EQ6, a free plugin that you can check out. And finally, as we enter Black Friday, one site you want to check out, we've mentioned this before, is Plugin Boutique. Uh, after Halloween passes, which will be when this episode airs, um, they should have their Black Friday deals posting up here where you can get discounts. Uh, I usually start here when I'm looking for plugins because not only do you get plugins uh, that are compared Comparative to the price on the actual site, but you also get some bonus points if you purchase from this site, and those can accrue, and you can use those points to purchase other plugins. So start with Plugin Boutique when you're searching for uh, libraries and things to purchase. Plugin Boutique is a good place to start. We will include a link to this also in the Discord group. This has been Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery, with another Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment. Be safe and be well, and happy Thanksgiving, everyone. All right, all right, peace. We're back. We're back. Hey, uh, thank you, Marcus Manderson, for another amazing segment. He, you know, he finds you guys the best stuff every time. Uh, love that guy. Uh, the 10% asks from the chat roll. Uh, hey, Ken, Dave Pensato mentioned in the last Faders of the Lost Art podcast that he was a Fletcher Munson fanatic. Well, what do you take away from that? Uh, I take away that... Dave Pensato is a genius with a pair of gigantic golden diamond platinum encrusted ears. But I don't ever think of Fletcher Munson when I work ever, ever. And I couldn't really give you an assessment of it right now. So that's kind of, 
Um, I mean, I get it. You know, your ears change uh, over the course of, you know, different volumes. But I figure that people's speaker systems are going to do the same thing. So uh, if everybody's speaker systems are going to have the Fletcher Munson curve applied as the volume goes up and down, then you should be conscious of it as a mixer, and your mix should sound great at all volumes um, and all sets of speakers. That's just, you know, uh, <laughs> part of being a pro is you got to deliver um, across all formats. It's got to sound great everywhere. It's got to translate in headphones and speakers and, you know, so there you go. Um, uh, speaking of which, how crazy is it that Dave Pensato joined the Faders of the Lost Art podcast? I mean, I wake up every day and I'm just like, nope, I'm, I'm, I'm awake. No, I'm st still awake. D d Seriously, Dave Pensato's on Faders? No, nope, still awake. I'm, it's mind-blowing. I mean, I've followed that guy for my whole career, and I got to be on... Uh, uh, I think it was episode 519 of uh, Pensado's Place. Thank you, Dave. Um, I want to see if I can do uh, some critiques. I'm not so certain that I can pull that off, but I'm going to try doing it right now. Um, a bunch of you sent critiques at the beginning of the broadcast, like I asked. I'm going to see who sent one with the proper description of something that I can actually key into and teach you guys. Give me one second to set this whole thing up. Um, ba -ba -ba. I'm just going to do it right here. Uh, where are these? So, you know, I was talking to some of the BOCES students uh, at AES. And they said, you know, one of their favorite things about AES was the critiques. And I was like, really? Oh, okay. Well, if they're that valuable to you, then I can deliver a few. Um, and now the problem is finding. <laughs> okay. Uh, date modified. Today. Why do I not see more of these? I'm trying to find them. Um, uh, Okay, we'll do the champion. Giveaway. Oh, wow, we got to do the giveaway. Holy crap. Uh, guys, can you text me a link to the giveaway? <laughs> so, so we are giving away, which I'm going to do right now before I do anything else. Totally forgot about that, my lord. Um, thank you so much, Focus Right. Uh, so, um, uh, Focusrite, uh, you know, I met them at, uh, well, I've known them before AES, but I've met all the Focusrite guys at AES. Great bunch of fellas. Uh, and we reached out to them a month ago and asked them if uh, we could find some common ground and do something great for our uh, community. And they offered up a, um, why is this doing this? Uh, they offered up a Focusrite Octo Pre Dynamics. So it's got, it's one box, eight mic pre's, and eight dynamics, uh, which is pretty amazing. Um, so we are going to give that away to one lucky uh, guest as soon as I can figure out what is hanging up my computer right now, other than the 10 things that I currently have running. Um, let me see if I can thin the herd before I crash the herd. So, got to say, so I've been running the studio off of a basic uh, Mac studio, like the basic bitch $2,000 bottom of the line one. And uh, for the most part, it's slow, but it's fine. It runs everything fine. It almost never chokes. I can run a shit ton of tracks and processing and the whole uh, ball of wax. Um, and did you uh, text that to me? And, uh, but I am... Definitely wishing that I could have a faster machine and an upgraded machine. Um, maybe I'll get that for Studio A at some point soon. What it's is... It's off screen right now, sir. The, the giveaway is? Because <laughs> I wouldn't put it on screen just yet. It's not loaded yet. Um, we're trying to get the giveaway on screen, but it's not coming yet. Um, 
I thought the internet's slow for some reason. That's really weird. Should I should I switch to the Wi-Fi? Um, yeah. All right. Let's see if the Wi-Fi does it. Come on. Well, we are still working out the kinks with the new room, but we are so happy to be in it. Uh, the one thing that was never a kink was the Sonics. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure I gave a big shout out to Mike DeSalvo at I Build Music Studios. Uh, catch him on IG, I Build Music Studios. Uh, Mike designed and built this place. Um, I, I had a you know a detached garage and. Uh, Man, he envisioned, you know, I told him I wanted a fully immersive um, uh, control room, no vocal booth. I like cutting vocals in the control room with the headphones. I love the immediacy of it. Um, and, you know, we just talked about goals and, and looked at the dimensions of the place, and he came in and just designed me an absolutely killer room. And uh, uh, can't thank him enough. You need uh, a killer studio designed yourself. Get it, Mike Salvo. He's he's the one. Um, I don't know how to. Am, do I need to be signed into this? I forget how to sign into this. Um, I thought this was gonna dump me right into it. Oh, I know how to sign in. Uh, don't show the screen. Um, I think I just need to log into Gleam. And then I will be there. And I'm pretty sure. Uh, 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 please work. I'm in. Finish. Okay, focus right giveaway. Don't show the screen yet until um I'm ready. Uh I think I can draw the winner. Alright, do we have a you know we gotta get sound effects and stuff here. I'm gonna do a little drum roll please. So for the focus right octa pre dynamics goes anywhere worldwide, drop shipped to uh, dun, dun. Boom. And the winner is Martina Soderberg in uh, Sweden. Martina Soderberg, congratulations. You just won a focus right Octo Pre Dynamics. We will have that drop ship to you in Sweden. And please, after you get it and you've put it through some sessions, please report back to Mixing Night and let us know how you like it and what your favorite things about it are. And uh, congratulations. Real people win real things here at Mixing Night. Congratulations, Martina. Woo! That's awesome. I love giving away great gear to awesome people. And we have, you know, if you're new to the community here, you should chime in on the chat roll, introduce yourself. Our Mixing Night community is truly one of the finest. I mean, they're just great people um, and uh, very welcoming and encouraging and supportive and all of those types of things. Now, let me find... Uh, which one am I about to listen to? You guys got to label your tracks. Champ, champion, okay. Sorry, I'm finding who this is. And then I will. There we go. Okay, this is from Joe Hogan. He says, this is a track in progress for feedback. It's aimed at sync licensing and female empowerment. Um, okay, well, let's see how you did on the sync licensing and female empowerment front. The song is called Champion.
Okay, so no vocals on it yet, so I'm assuming that you're hoping to either have somebody write vocals on it or you're going to write vocals yourself uh, for some sort of female empowerment song. Um, okay, uh, the production is kind of noisy right now, and you're going to have a hard time plop uh, putting a uh, lead vocal down into the middle of that production, um, especially like when that piano starts kicking in. So you're going to end up with the lead vocal so far above the, the music, which might be totally fine. It might work great. Um, but you're really cramming a lot into the mid-range. A lot of the drum uh, parts are demanding the mid-range. Uh, the guitar is demanding the mid-range, and the piano is. Um, and uh, so uh, you're not leaving a lot of space for the vocalist. Um, as far as licensing, I don't know. I think that's an iffy thing on this one. It doesn't, It you know... The thing about music licensing is music supervisors want to license the absolute best music that they can possibly find. And that's usually from really well-established independent artists who have been making records for a long time, who are really good at it, who are crafting gems. And I don't think you're there yet, but uh, you've found the right place to grow your skills, and I think you just need to, you know, knuckle down and, and refine your skills. Um, you know, the, and uh, clean up the production a little bit, focus a little bit more, pick a little bit better sounds, and write a, a stunning but simple top line. That's, a, that's the other thing. A top line is going to change everything for sync. And, you know, in sync they use the, the disco system, and you can put your lyrics in, you can tag it with all sorts of keywords and stuff like that. So, you know, music supervisor starts their search, if they're blind searching, just in the disco system, just searching keywords and seeing what comes up, and then it'll start scanning. They're going to listen to a few seconds of things. You have like five or ten seconds at most uh, to, you know, initially catch them and go like, all right, well, is this the right one? Mm, nah, not the right mood for me. You know, they've got an idea of exactly what they want. And the thing is, you could have the most perfect track for Syncland that was ever written and still, it might never, ever get synced. One, because uh, either you don't have a sync agent or you have a sync agent who isn't pitching it or isn't pitching it to the right people or who knows. But if you don't have a sync agent, it's almost impossible to get syncs because uh, music su supervisors usually only deal with sync agents because they know the music is pre-cleared they don't have to worry about um, rights on it. The rights are already taken care of. All of that good stuff. Uh, so step one, um, get a sing. Well, step one, just keep making records and make start making the best records you can possibly make over and over and over. And eventually you're going to make one that you're like, I could hear this in every scene of every movie. And, you know, the other advice in Syncland is to keep a little space. Um, uh, the only sync that this music would work for is something where there's no dialogue on screen whatsoever because this is right in the dialogue range, there's no room for it, and it's you know really loud and driving. Um, so you're already limited to like a no dialogue scene for sync to begin with with this song. Um, yeah, there you go. So uh, let's see, what else can I pull into here for critiques? Where did that all go? Um, I think, no. All right, let's see what people are throwing down. Um, What is this song called? Can't stop it. Well, I can't find anything tonight. Jeez, I'm trying to I'm trying to give you guys some critiques, but I can't find any where any of these are downloaded to. Uh, what's the name of this track? 23 PDRA. All right, let me see if I can find this one. And 
Do, are these downloading somewhere other than the downloads folder? I really can't find these at all. I'm fucking super confused. Let's see if I can just eyeball them. Whoa, is that? Where are they? Oh, I put them in the show. Ha 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 ha. That would be why. I found them. Okay, I think this is the PDRA. He wrote this for a. Uh, hey Ken, love the show and your work. This is a recent audio track for an online drag racing commercial. Fun. I would love to hear your thoughts on tonal balance, the mix, whatever else you can offer. Uh, Michael Ivy. Hey, Michael Ivy. Let's give it a listen. Why don't I hear this? Oh. It's the end of the road for 2023. The battles will be epic. And champions will be crowned. The PDRA Pro Line Racing Brian Olson Memorial World Finals. Presented by Pro Charger. October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of their machines and themselves for world championship titles. Get tickets now at PDRA660.com. I think that's super dope. There's one thing that I would definitely fix, and that's the DSing on the lead vocal. I'm going to see if I can f uh, get a cheat code for you right now and help you fix it. Um, so what you're going to want to do with the DSer is you're going to want to do a notch DSer. So instead of the, the, uh, the, this one, the shelf, you're going to go type. Come on, mouse. You're going to go notch. So what that's going to do is it's going to only take out the frequency that you tell it to in the middle, and it's going to leave the top and the bottom alone. Give it a listen. My Pro Charger, October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports. And here's the cheat code for uh, RDSer. It's got the listen, so you can just hit the listen button, and it's going to be harsh as hell, but you can really dial in the frequency onto where the harshest part of the S's that you want to um, reduce and control are happening so that you can put the middle of your uh, frequency there. So PDRA will push the limits of Micro Charger October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA. Uh, hopefully you can see that. My frequency is 7711. I've got a notch. Um, and this is across the entire thing. And you can see that it's almost exclusively reacting only to the lead vocal. So you know if you go back to your source mix and you do this only on the lead vocal, it's just going to smooth it out that much more. My Pro Charger, October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of my Pro Charger. October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All I also feel like it's a little bit thin. My Pro Charger, October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of my Pro Charger. October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of my Pro Charger. October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of my Pro Charger. October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of my Pro Charger. October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of my Pro Charger. October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of my Pro Charger. October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of my Pro Charger. October 19th... Okay, let's see if I can get this mouse to work. Come on. Go back to gold clip. 
Hypro Charger, October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of Hypro Charger, October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of Hypro Charger, October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of Hypro Charger, October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of Hypro Charger, October 19th through 22nd, Virginia Motorsports Park. All the stars and cars of PDRA will push the limits of Hypro Charger, October 19th through. So I think I think you can go back and beef up the low end of your mix a little bit. You can see what I'm doing here. The goal clip is just pushing uh, some final level. Um, I'm boosting. Looks like about come on mouse. Um, two twenty about two twenty five at uh, maybe three and a half four uh, dB. Um, and that's on the LR and then on the sides only. Uh, I went, I don't know if you saw that, but I went after I did the um, boost at 220, uh, I clicked uh, mid-side, and then I boosted to only the sides at about 580, is it say? By about 3 dB, and just made those a little bit wider. Um, which, you know, there's, the stereo information is, a lot of it is a little bit underneath the, uh, uh, the uh, announcer. So this kind of just pulls it out a little bit more, and gives it a bit more width. But um, overall, it's great job i mean i think your the production of it is fantastic guys spot on i would want to go see uh the races uh hearing this um i think you can uh, juice it up a little bit uh, of course i don't know what the parameters are for broadcast as well so i'm making these record parameters so um if the if they're the same for broadcast and i think you squeeze a little bit you fatten it up a little bit you ds the lead vocal and the lead vocal also has some resonance in the lower mids that um, uh, I noticed when I brought in, uh, when I boosted the lower mids across the entire thing, it made the lead vocal a little bit too bassy. So I think you're super close. You've just got a few more moves to go, and, uh, and I think you're right where you need to be. So we are, man, where did the time go today? We are already past 10 o'clock, so we've been at it for two hours. Um, it's been kind of a seat-of-our-pants show, but... Uh, uh, we will be a well-oiled machine again uh, next broadcast, and uh, I hope you love the new room. We absolutely adore it here. Uh, it's been amazing, and uh, if you want to book it, get at me. We are available. I'll talk to you later. Thank you, and uh, have a great mixing night. Happy November 1st. Wow, we're uh, heading towards the end of the year so quickly. We'll see you again in December. Have a great night. Happy mixing night.